Washed Up Sports Washed Podcast. Up sports podcast. Washed, Washed Up Sports Washed Podcast. Washed Up Sports Podcast. Washed Up Sports Podcast. What's going on? 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 What's going on, guys? What's going on, guys? Welcome back to season two of a Washed Up Sports Podcast. This is episode six. My name is Evan Klein, and I am glad to be joined alongside my co-host Max Lindley. What's going on, guys? Brand new episode, Super Sunday Spectacular. You know what it is. We're super pumped. Yes, sir. We are very excited about the big game coming up this Sunday, the Super Bowl. I know Max is as well. We are an authentic sports commentary from the perspective of two washed up athletes. This episode is brought to you by The Daily Scoop. The Daily Scoop is the premier dog walking and pet sitting service of Bergen County located in Glenrock. The Daily Scoop provides service not only to Glenrock but to several surrounding towns as well. The Daily Scoop ensures that your pets are getting the best possible care while you can't be with them. Inquire for more at www.thedailyscoop.com. That's scoop with a K at www.thedailyscoop.com. Max with the Instagram. The Daily Scoop LLC. Absolutely. Go get it. So obviously, we know we're used to being in the studio. You guys are used to seeing us on YouTube in the studio, but we are being uh, COVID cautious this week, just making sure. So we're doing this one on Zoom. I know it's the the big Super Bowl episode, but um, these kind of things you can't really control. So we're still going to make the most of it and put out a banger episode for you guys. Absolutely, and hopefully we'll be able to get back to it next week. Absolutely. After tests and everything, all the all the precautions followed, safety guidelines. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get back to it next week. But for now, we got a brand new episode. Like we said, this one's a banger. So, without further ado, uh, I'm just gonna quickly go over the Bucks' path to victory um, in this uh, Super Bowl game. So, obviously, they need to sc- score early and often. And uh, a lot, too. But with that being said, they need to hold the ball while they're scoring. They can't go on short scoring drives. And this could be the same for the same thing we say for the Chiefs later. But they can't go on long uh, on short scoring drives. They have to go on these long scoring drives so they eat a clock. Um, And then also in the second half, they definitely just cannot pump the ball. Uh, This is one thing I was thinking about when... In the second half, that's when Mahomes really turns on. I feel like you just cannot give him the ball in that type of space. I don't know what you think of. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, my my big thing, I agree with everything you're saying. My big thing with this for the Bucks is, you know, we obviously saw it. We've seen what Tom Brady can do in the big game. If you're the Bucks, don't get too comfortable with any lead but if you're down don't get too worried if you're down which i know they won't be i mean we saw it with the falcons game basically there's no deficit that tom brady and company can't come back from so i think they just got to always be in it and i think uh it's going to be a phenomenal game on their hands absolutely going to be a great game one last thing about the bucks before we get to a quick call in from carly Hellfand um of the tampa bay buccaneers but one last thing, the Bucks need to win the turnover battle. They can't get into another one of those games like they did against the Green Bay Packers where they lost the turnover battle. They're not going to win it. They're not going to beat the Chiefs if that's the case. They need to win the turnover battle, uh, cause more turnovers than uh, than they have. So, yeah, that's a, that's a big key for them. Yeah, it's hard to come by because Mahomes doesn't turn the ball over a lot. And we're coming off a game where Brady threw three picks. So should be interesting to see what goes on in terms of turnovers. Exactly. So just quickly, like I said, we're going to get into a quick call from uh, Carly Hellfand of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. She's a scouting assistant for them. So uh, Ev gets the fortunate opportunity to talk with her. So we're going to cut to that real quick. Hey, Carly, I'm back on the show. Congrats on making it to the Super Bowl. Hey, guys, it's so great to be back on the show. Really happy to be here again with you guys. So. We're wondering, when did you know that this team had what it takes to make this Super Bowl run? So, I think this team really showed that they had what it takes to go to the Super Bowl uh, during the divisional round against the Saints in the playoffs. I think that was a game where we really showed how cohesive we could be as a full team. Offense, defense, we played physical to beat those guys, and we needed to show up and we couldn't lose to them for a third time. It was not an option. And I think we really came through 
and showed what this team could be. Um, and it really solidified this run in the playoffs. So how cool is it for you to be a part of the first team in NFL history to be playing in a Super Bowl at their home stadium? It's awesome that we're going to be in our home stadium for the Super Bowl. Um, obviously, it's history being made, and it's just amazing to be a part of it. Um, I think it's going to be really awesome for our team. It's going to be really awesome for the fans and really awesome for the city of Tampa. So are you going to be on the sidelines for the game, or what's that situation going to be like for you? I will not be on the sidelines for the game. Um, normally, we're not on the sidelines for the game, even in a... Um, normal season, we're usually just on the sidelines for pregame, and then we're up in a box. This year has been a little different because of all the COVID protocols, um, but I will be at the game, which I am super, super psyched about. All right, Carly, thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate your time during these busy weeks coming up, and good luck to you guys in the big game. Uh, thanks so much for having me back on, guys. And go back. Welcome back from that quick call with Carly Hellfan from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Awesome to get to catch up with Carly again. She was one of our first guests on the show, so it was really cool to hear from her about the big game. She gets the fortunate opportunity to be there, which is really cool, and work with the team. So good luck to her and the Buccaneers in the, in the, the big one this Sunday. Absolutely. That was awesome to hear. Uh, and we're absolutely wishing her the best of luck this Sunday. Yeah, I appreciate her taking the t time out of these busy couple weeks to, you know, make a little time for us and a Wash Up Sports podcast. Absolutely. Big thanks. Uh, so, a little transition. We're going to talk about the Chiefs, the other team in the big game. So, yeah. the Chiefs' path to victory. I'm going to do a little breakdown, and then Ev, Ev is going to hop in with his thoughts. Um, so, I think the Chiefs have to score. Yes, that's obvious. But like I said earlier, they can't score too quickly. And this is more important for the Chiefs because they have such an explosive offense. They're not going to win the game if every drive they're throwing an 80-yard touchdown. And it's a two-minute long drive. They need drives that are going to substantiate throughout the, throughout the game that are going to be like five, six-minute drives that eat up clocks so Tom Brady doesn't come on the field and uh, keep Pat Mahomes off the field. You know what I mean? And uh, the, they, they're going to do that. They're going to need a solid run game. And everyone thinks that the key to this game is going to be Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. But really, it's going to be Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, and uh, Williams. Because they're going to, and possibly Le'Veon Bell if he plays. I don't know if he's going to play. But it uh, looks like he's not. But uh, the running backs are going to be a key in this game. If they could get going and keep Tom Brady off the field, the Chiefs are going to have a phenomenal chance of winning this game. Yeah. And I don't think it's a secret that the Chiefs are a favorite in this game. It's not a secret, obviously. But the thing is, a lot of people have been saying, well, you know, two-headed monster, Hill and Kelsey. Well, the thing is, we saw, so last time they, they played earlier in the season and Carlton Davis got kind of toasted by Tyreek Hill, right? Yep. So, but now we've seen these performances, Carlton Davis shutting down Michael Thomas, handling Devontae Adams. So now maybe Carlton Davis has stepped up his game a little bit. So let's see how how the Hill Davis matches up. I'm, that's the, that matchup that I'm by far most excited for in this ball game. So I'm really excited for that. Let's see. They're gonna, but you know, I think the uh, the Bucks defense is as well suited as anybody in the league to stop this Chiefs offense, which is a task in its own, in itself. I mean, if you're the Chiefs, you gotta you gotta stay on the field and you have to keep your defense off the field. So. Oh, I disagree with that on uh, on the Bucks defense. I don't think they're very well equipped to deal with this Chiefs uh, offense and the wide receiving core. I think uh, Carlton Davis won't be left alone with Tyreek Hill once, especially after that game earlier in the season. I think uh, they're definitely going to have a safety over the top pretty much every play, playing a lot of cover two, playing a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, deep safety just so they, they have him over the top for Tyreek so he, he can't explode deep. But uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think Carlton Davis has looked great, but um, I don't think they'll leave him one-on-one -on -one with Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill looks like the best wide receiver in the league right now. Yeah, I don't I, I don't doubt that they will probably have somebody over the top helping yeah. with Tyreek Hill, but it should be interesting to see what else they do because I, I do think the Buccan I like the Buccaneers secondary. I like... Devin White, I like Barry, I like their I like their whole defense a lot. I think that they have a really talented defense. So I think 
I think if I was to like com just compare defenses, I, I like the Buccaneers defense better than the Chiefs defense. Right. I mean, I like, I'd probably take, if it were me, I'd probably take the Chiefs secondary and then the Bucks front seven. Because I like Shaq Barrett. I like uh, Jason Pierre Paul. I like, I like all those dudes up front uh, in the trenches on the defensive line and playing linebacker. But I'm not that big of a fan of the DBs on Tampa. But I can get behind Tyron Matthew on the Chiefs, and uh, he's a you know he's a, a real pro. But I mean, I like Murphy Bunting too on Buckney. I think he's pretty good. So I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not completely dis disagreeing. I'm just saying my piece too. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we're thinking about the Chiefs. You have anything else to add about them? Um, let me see. Chiefs D. Um, they need to make stops on third down. They can't let Brady get into a rhythm on third down. Um, when Brady gets hot on third down, that's when you're in trouble facing him. So uh, that's just the last thing I want to add. Gotcha. Yeah, I think we're going to have – I mean, I I'd say I think we're going to have a one-square game on our hands now. I mean, I th I that's, that's my prediction. I'd say a one-square game no matter – either way. Yeah, I think it's going to be close no matter what. Yeah. So I, after yeah. Last year, I really need a good Super Bowl this year. Yeah, last year was a good Super Bowl. If you don't, if you don't, um, it, it seems very far away at this point. But that was a really good game. The Chiefs were losing late. Yeah, they came back to win that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just I was a little disappointed with the game last year. I wasn't as excited. I just wasn't that excited. I, I just didn't find it like that exciting last year. But it was a decent game. But I'm just ex I'm hoping that there's a lot of touchdowns this year. And you know, yeah, that kind of stuff. my guess is because Brady wasn't in it. Right. Of course yeah. not. So guys, before we get into the beef of this episode, we have an interview from Ayal Passar, who is the partnerships coordinator at BetMGM. He's joining the show. He works in the sports gambling department of that company. And I know that's been a huge uprising lately. So we're really excited to have him and we're gonna cut to that now. We are now happy to be joined by Ayal Passar, the partnerships coordinator at BetMGM. Ayal, thanks so much for coming on today, man. Ev, it's great to see you. Max, great to be here. Guys, appreciate you having me. Of course. Of course. Thanks for coming on. So uh, we're going to jump right into uh, the interview. So we're going to start talking a little bit about um, MGM. So MGM Resorts, they've been around since 1993. Just recently in 2018, MGM Resorts and Entain Holdings signed the deal to launch BetMGM. Um, so when did you start working for BetMGM? And how has it been entering a brand new industry like sports gambling? So I started um, almost a year ago now, about a month away from my one year anniversary, which is crazy to think. Um, it seems like it was yesterday, just, you know, I, I started at a very interesting time about two or three weeks before um, everyone started working from home. So it's been an interesting uh, transition in first year, but um, how I got started in the sports gambling industry, I didn't really see myself uh, working in this field. But, um, you know, now that I'm in it, I'm truly grateful to be a part of it. It's it's uh, a booming industry. And, um, you know, a lot of people like to talk about the trends when it comes to the business side of sport, the biggest trends in sport. And uh, by far the number one is sports gambling. So um, did not picture myself in this field originally, but certainly happy and, and grateful to be a part of it. Absolutely, man. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. So you are a partnerships coordinator. So um, could you talk a little bit about what your job entails and, you know, what does a, a day in the life of AL look like working for BetMGM? Well, um, that's that's a great question. So uh, partnerships is a very um, interesting field. You know, it's, it's all about building relationships. And, uh, you know, a lot of the skills that you learn are transferable to other big companies or, or entities that have a partnerships department. It's it's a great way for two big um, sides to come together and sort of reach a unified target market or, or a similar target market, I should say. Um, so as a partnerships coordinator, I mainly work on all of our team and league deals uh, that we have in place and serve as an intermediary between uh, the entire marketing department and uh, overall company, and then all of the partners that we work with. So just to give you a few 
Um, you know, we work with all the top sports leagues here in the U.S. The NFL is, is not really involved in uh, sports gambling yet, other than on the uh, daily fantasy side. So, you know, more so the uh, the NBA, MLB, NHL, and MLS. And then we have a roster of about 10 teams uh, with hopefully several more to come that I work with. And um, as a partnerships coordinator, other than a lot of day-to-day -day work and, you know, uh, tons of meetings, um, really it's it's a lot about managing uh hospitality banks and also um you know working on co-marketing campaigns and and uh big media plans where we have several key assets and um different things that we have to execute throughout a season and um you know certainly a lot of money that goes into it um and uh you know on the back end there's tons of tracking you know sports in general but even so marketing is becoming more and more analytical so um you know every piece every campaign that we that we put out there we track on a very granular level so there's a lot of back-end work a lot of um you know measuring of statistics and then of course uh year-end reporting so um it's it sounds a lot flashier on paper at first but um it's it's a lot of of uh, detailed work as well no doubt that's a great answer yeah that was a fantastic answer Kind of expanding on that, um, we went up and it said BetMGM is the official betting partner of the Las Vegas Raiders and that MGM Resorts is kind of in partnership with Allegiant Stadium. Do you know anything that like went into that partnership and what that offers new to Las Vegas Raiders fans than maybe before when there wasn't a partnership there? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, as you guys mentioned to start the call, MGM Resorts has been around for quite some time and, you know, has established themselves as a as a mogul in the entertainment and hospitality uh, fields. So, you know, they themselves already established several partnerships across the sports industry. Um, and many of those when our company was built were um, extended towards us. So now that we've been established we do, um, you know, build our own deals and our own relationships, but we also have some that we work on with the MGM Resort side, uh, Las Vegas Raiders being one of those. Um, really, the benefits um, that come out of, out of these relationships are, again, just, you know, we share a very similar target market in, um, in many ways. So um, it just makes sense from, from a business standpoint to work together to reach that market. And um, there are definitely a lot of benefits to working with uh, a brand new team and, and a brand new stadium like the Las Vegas Raiders and Allegiant Stadium. And, you know, that that whole field there in Vegas, um, when it comes to sports, is just it's just getting started. There's a lot more to uh, to accomplish there. No doubt. It's definitely cool to think about like all the everybody sees, you know, what what comes on their screen. But at the end of the day, there's so much like behind the scenes work. Um, that people don't think about. So it's cool to kind of get an inside look on, you know, some of that stuff, no doubt. Definitely. So um, with the recent boom in sports gambling over, you know, the recent period of time, what are you guys doing at BetMGM to stay ahead of the curve? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, we were not one of the first competitors to enter this field. So um, obviously there were a couple uh, that I don't, really want to mention but they've been there for a little bit longer and and uh you know we're established but um i think we're probably one of the more fast growing uh sports betting brands and um and again you know i just think that the way that this company operates from a brand standpoint you know we're very strategic and and where we um you know place our logos and, and you know the kind of campaigns that we run um you know we've been getting more and more creative and I think um, you know one of the ways that we really lead and separate ourselves from the competition is our use of um, IP, which uh, is, is intellectual property, which technically is you know uh, the use of logos and, and brands and, and likeness um, what, and whatnot when it comes to sports leagues and teams, and you know how we feature that, how we uh, build our creative and, and marketing assets, and um, you know use. Um, you know, team and league IP is, is by far ahead of, of competitors, in my opinion. Um, you know, on top of that, I think that we just have a great structure from the top down and, um, you know, a really tight-knit company that 
it's it's uh, a great situation for us to kind of move forward and uh, establish ourselves as, as one of the top dogs moving forward. Absolutely. Um, so we're kind of talking about the boom earlier. So sports gambling legal in 20 states right now. It seems it's more of a when, not if, of when it's legal, like countrywide. Do, do you do you have any guesses as to when that will be? When all 50 states will have sports betting legally? Yeah. So you know, it's interesting that you say there are 20. It might actually even be 22 there states that have some form of uh, of sports gambling. And I say some form because there are there are various types of not just sports gambling but gambling that need to be legalized before they can, um, you know, be offered to people in certain states. So you have to look at it from a retail standpoint where you have either a casino or a physical sports book and whether or not that's legal, then from a digital standpoint, which is really the focus of, you know, my company and, and all of our competitors. Um, and, and in that capacity, there are only a handful of states where on a digital level, you can operate and uh, conduct business. So um, again, there are a few different forms of gambling and not all of them are always um, going to be legal in any given state. Some states have all of them. Some states only have a couple of types. Uh, Daily Fantasy being another great example. It's been around for you know a few years now, quite a few years. And a place like New York where I live has Daily Fantasy, but they don't have sports gambling technically. So. Um, so that that's one way to look at it. And then in terms of a federal law or when I see 50 states legalizing, I'll tell you this, uh, the states are falling like dominoes in a sense. Um, I think there are a lot of states in recent time that, you know, have recently just um, passed laws to allow for some sort of sports gambling to occur in their states. And I think a lot more are going to follow suit um, when it comes to a federal level, I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, and when it comes to all 50 states having the ability to sports gamble to some extent, that also might take some time. But I can tell you this, we're in January. Uh, by January 2022, that amount of states could possibly double. So um, we'll see what happens. And uh, I think uh, I think a lot of states are eager to get in. Yeah, no doubt. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's such a profitable market, not only for like for the people betting, but the companies as well. And then when once like obviously this is type of stuff that has to be regulated by, you know, government and stuff like that. So like with taxes and everything that comes into play. So there's there's so much to think about. There's a lot to think about. And, um, you know, you mentioned the governments and, and regulation. Um, that's a huge part of what we do is making sure we're, you know, following all the rules properly and taking the time to, um, you know, really, there's there's a lot that goes into compliance and, um, and you know, regulatory guidelines that uh, take up a lot of our day and, and making sure that we're, we're doing things properly. And, you know, as, a, as someone who works in partnerships, even more so, a lot of these teams and leagues, sports gambling being a new field, you know, they're very careful in uh, what they allow and what they don't. So there's certainly a lot of back and forth to make sure that we're uh, we're following everybody's rules properly. No doubt. Um, I just had a little like side question before we continue on. So obviously, before you mentioned that you work with um, partnerships with a lot of the major sports leagues in the U.S. So for you personally, it has to be cool like working with the major teams like be, getting off of a phone call somebody from let's say like philadelphia 76 or something like that like what's it like for you to you know after like working to get to where you are now to be able to you know just like see that you're talking with like the best of the best and like you get to talk with these teams that everybody knows and everybody watches like millions of fans yeah no you just have to be grateful um especially in a time like now for me to just be able to have a job and um you know be able to work support myself I'm um, very lucky. And when it comes to what I do every day, um, yeah, I I did not know that I could be in a position like this where I'm able to work with some of the best sports names in the business, um, you know, when it comes to the teams and leagues that we're partnered with. So definitely um, very lucky again to be, to be in that position. And um, yeah, it's still really 
it's still really sinking, man. You know, I, I haven't fully grasped that I uh, I get to work with these these great names every uh, every single week. So um, yeah, very very lucky. No doubt, no doubt. Staying humble too. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so in a different thing to say for you, Mister uh, Mister Patriots fan over there. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, um, in addition to sports betting, BetMGM is also involved in online gaming, major tournament poker. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and if there's anything else that maybe BetMGM uh, has been looking to get into? Yeah, definitely. Um, I am specifically focused on sports all day, every day. So, for me to speak on the casino and poker side of the business is tough, but I will say that Again, sports gambling being a new industry, like any other one or any other business, it takes time to really turn a profit and to establish yourself. So the casino and poker side are definitely the backbone of the business and, excuse me, and uh, a foundation really to kind of expand and build on, on these newer things such as sports gambling. Um, so we do have an unbelievable poker team and poker program here where we have online tournaments and you know several different types of tournaments as well um and when it comes to the casino side of things again just you know plenty of great options there and it's it's definitely a user favorite to uh hop on the casino um you know part of part of our product um again just two of, of the major pillars of this company no doubt no doubt very cool it's cool to see, see stuff like that. Like you see the sports gambling in the front and then you're like, well, the backbone of it is really this and this. Um, so it's really cool to see that. No doubt. Yeah. So segueing into, um, you know, wrapping up a little bit. So the sports industry is, you know, definitely one of the most competitive industries, you know, out there. So especially for uh, washed up athletes like ourselves, do you have any advice for a high school or college student that's looking to get into the sports industry as a non-athlete? Yeah. Um, first of all, I don't know how you guys are washed up. I don't know what that makes me then, but, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, definitely, you know, learned a lot of good things over the past uh, few years, you know, starting more so in college. Um, when I was in high school, I, I had absolutely no idea what I was gonna be doing, where I was gonna be going to school. And uh, it was actually my mom that showed me an article about sports management being uh, a major. And, you know, Evan knows, has known me for years. He knows that I'm a big sports fan, just like you guys. So to see something like that, um, it, it got me a little bit excited about the academic side of college. So, um, you know, once I got into a, a good program over at, uh, up at Syracuse, um, you know, it was, it was time to take full advantage. And, you know, in terms of, of tips, um, I'd say the biggest thing you can do once you, you know, get to the end of high school, um, even more so in college is, is get experience. You know, if you're at a, at a top school or uh, any school really that has a sports or an athletic department rather, um, you know, get involved, work in marketing, work in game day operations, work in ticket sales. I was, I was doing ticket sales, you know, uh, making cold calls for hours um, for a few days a week, and you know, I made a sale. I didn't get it. I didn't get a single cent from it. So really, just for the experience, um, you know, I worked on game days. I did marketing, different things like that as well. Uh, the the second piece, which you know might be even more so important, is uh, you know building your network, building your name. So this is an industry that uh, for most of us that are going into it, unless you're you know planning to be an athlete. Um, it's really the biggest thing is, is about who you, who you know, who you've connected with, who knows you and, and what you've done and what you've accomplished. And, you know, the best way to go about that is, is to uh, do your research, reach out to uh, people of interest, companies of interest where you can, you know, um, connect with a person there that can talk to you about what they do and what the company does. Never expect anything to come to you a job, uh, an interview, nothing. Just go into it asking for information, no expectations. Make sure that you're always listening more than you're talking. And, um, you know, just continue to to push and, and try to get those, we call them informational or informative rather interviews. 
those are, are the key to getting your feet in the door at uh, any company that you really are, are interested in or passionate about. And um, all you can do is just keep plugging away. It takes a lot of effort. It's not easy. It's a competitive field, but um, it's possible. So that's definitely the biggest advice that I could give is just to continue to, to network yourself and, you know, never expect anything to just come to you. Hey, all Pissar, everyone, just, you know, absolute inspiration out here. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I actually uh, help Steph Curry to inspire people too. So I'm, I'm working, uh, I'm working on it too myself, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, again, it's, it's, uh, it's a really, it's a really interesting field. Um, and I just think that, um, again, it's, it's, definitely the biggest trend in the sports industry so keep an eye out for for sports gambling it's it's taking over absolutely absolutely hey y'all thanks so much for coming on the show man this was a pleasure yeah really uh happy that you guys invited me it's a pleasure to be on and uh love this show keep doing what you guys are doing thank you very appreciate much. it man appreciate it yeah. take care guys Welcome back from that interview. Absolutely electric. Can't thank y'all enough for coming on. That was really an awesome opportunity for us. And we appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, all what a guy, what a supporter too. Says he's a big fan of the show. Love that. Yeah, absolutely. I love when people, when we have guests on and they've like actually listened to the show before. That's always awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> no doubt. So we mentioned the beef of the episode before we went to that interview. So here it is, we have the Super Pick'em presented by Advanced Office Furniture. Since 2003, Advanced Office Furniture has been providing the New York metro area with the highest quality custom furniture. All the furniture is produced in their state-of-the-art manufacturing facility here in New Jersey and never outsourced. Your business is unique, so why don't you choose to furnish it with specialty furniture that is built to last? With high quality customized solutions, no matter what your needs are, Advanced Office Furniture will surely exceed your standards. Their website is www.advancedofficefurniture.com. They have you covered during the COVID pandemic, your home offices, your storefronts they're doing now, kitchens now. So they're really, you know, they can adapt to whatever your needs are and, you know, just get it now. Advanced Office Furniture, anything you can imagine, they have it, so... Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we got some exciting news coming up from them. We're not going to reveal it now, but just going to hand it that. Right. Yeah. We have a little uh, event, I guess you could call it. Yeah, I guess we'll call it that. We got an event coming up. Just stay tuned for a good surprise that we have coming with our, our partners, Advanced Office Furniture. That'll be coming up in the next couple of weeks. So we will definitely keep you guys updated on that and you will know when you see it. All right. So the pick em score, 16 to 12, Ev. You're beating me. Yep. Um, you're not gonna rebel in my face at all? I mean, listen, so I obviously got the better of you by no surprise to anyone in the regular season, but now it's anyone's game because we have tons of prop bets for the Super Bowl that are all fair game. So I really am, you know, I gotta be on the edge of my seat because Max has plenty of room to make a comeback in this final- 15 games. Right, right. So right. we have, how many do we have? 15. We have 15 things that we're picking. So they're really, it, it's anybody's game. So, um, so yeah, it all comes down to this. This is the final pick em for NFL. Not to say that we won't do it for something else maybe in the future, but this is the final NFL pick em. We have all these prop bets and it's, it's anyone's game. So get ready for the biggest week of pick em by far. And you know, whoever loses this week, it could end up being the one in the embarrassing costume on the season finale, so. Absolutely, yeah. All right, so starting off, coin toss, heads or tails, Ev? I got tails for the coin I got toss. tails too, tails never fails. Sounds good. So now we got first team touchdown. There is Bucks and Chiefs, so Max, who do you have to I'm, I'm gonna go with the Chiefs. I'm also gonna take the Chiefs. I, I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna win the toss and score first, that's like, that's my guess. All right, so total punts. This is, a, this is an interesting one. Over or under six and a half? Total punts over or under six and a half between both teams, right? Yep. I'll take the under on the punts. I'll take the over. Okay. Fair. All right. So. So now we have total touchdowns over or under six and a half, Max. Mm, over. 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 All right. We're both on over. Total field goals made. 
Over, under three and a half. Over. Over. Okay. All right. Mahomes total passing yards over under 334. Very specific. Is that the Vegas line? Yep. Okay. What do you have for that? I'm going to go over. I'll go under. All right. Mahomes total TDs over under two and a half. Over. I'll go over. I agree. Brady total passing yards over under 300. Over. Over. Definitely. He always he always hits the over in passing road yards, except for against the Rams. I don't think he did. My guess, I don't know why. I mean, I took the under for the Mahomes ones, but like I think he'll have 300, but I don't know if he'll get the 334 watch. I bet it's going to be like 315. You guys heard it here first. Th- around 315. That's my guess for Mahomes' passing yards. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have... Brady, Brady total TDs. Total TDs. So you, am I going first for this one or are you? Uh, what's the over under? It's two and a half. Oh, um, I'll go, I'll go under. I'll go over. Because I think Leonard Fournette's going to have a day. He's going to get some touchdowns at the one five-yard line. Fair enough. All right, so next, um, tight end with more TDs, Gronk or Kelsey? Kelsey. I'm going to go Gronky boy. Okay, fair enough. I don't know how that's going to work with my Tom Brady, with my uh, Brady total TDs. <laughs> okay, so now we have wide receiver with more yards, Mike Evans or Tyreek Hill? I'm going to go Mike Evans here. I'm going to go Tyreek Hill. All right, I think my, I think Tyreek Hill is going to get more attention than Mike Evans does, just explaining my side here. I don't know what you think. I, I think that's true, but I also think – no, yeah, that's not, a, that's not a bad take. Yeah, I mean – The Buccaneers have a much better array of wide receivers than than the Chiefs, I guess. Like Chris Godwin. I mean, I don't know. Do they? I I think Godwin, Miller, A.B.'s. Tyree Kill, Miko Hardman, Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I mean, if you don't count tight ends. I don't know. Robinson. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. Has come on a little bit in the hundred percent. Yeah, the Bucks have an elite wide receiver core. Is AB right. playing right? Yup. There you go. Yup. All right. So over under fifty six total points. Over. I'm trying to figure this out in my head. I mean, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with over. Yeah, based off of like everything else you picked, it would be. I feel like you would have to take the over. Yeah, unless it's a low-scoring game. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, next up. MVP. Mahomes, Brady, Hill, Kelsey, Fournette, Godwin. Who you got? I'll go with Brady. I'll go with Brady. The GOAT going for number seven. Here we go. Yes, sir. All right. Who's the winner at halftime, Ev? Halftime winner, Chiefs. I'm with you. I think Chiefs are also going to be the halftime winner. Game winner, Max. Final vet, final uh, prop we got for the pick'em. This is the big one. You know, Tampa Bay Buccaneers going to bring it home, get the seventh touch, uh, seventh Super Bowl for Tom Brady. So Max is taking the Buccaneers, and it would not be any fun to close the season if I didn't go against Max. I think it's anyone's ball game, I really do. But for the sake of the pick 'em, I got the Chiefs to go against Max because I'm better than him at this. And that's a wrap on the super pick 'em for the Super Bowl. This is gonna be elite. Definitely the most packed week of pick 'em we have yet. So what do you think, Max? I think I'm gonna kick your ass, buddy. Ah, uh, yeah, I've heard this every week, guys, and look. I hear you try to rub it in my face every week, but I'm still in the game. Bottom line, I'm the, uh, like bottom line, I'm still in the game. You're in the game. You're not winning the game, but you're in the game. Hey, that's all it takes. I'm the comeback kid, Tom Brady. You are not the comeback kid or Tom Brady. But we'll see about that on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, Ev, this was a ton of fun, man. We made do. Yeah, we tried to make the best of it with what is given to us, but we are so excited for the big game. We will report back to you guys next week. We have so much good stuff planned coming up, guys. A Wash Up Sports podcast. We are just getting started. It is about to get crazy. So stay tuned and ride with us. Follow the Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube. Yes, sir. Just to break it down real quick before we get out of here, just a couple things to look forward to. Next week, we got Behind the Bench, Wednesday, YouTube, IGTV, 6 and 7 p.m. Eastern, respectively. And then, obviously, Thursdays, we got brand new episodes of Watch Up Sports Podcast, 12 p.m. YouTube, and 1 p.m. on all of the streaming platforms. And then, beyond that, we're going to close out the season, and we got some giveaways coming, and probably a vlog or two. So, we got some great stuff. And I know you're excited. I know I'm pumped. Yeah, a little, a couple other housekeeping things. We're at Washed Up Sports Pod on Instagram. You can always find us. And then we have two designs of t-shirts out right now. So make sure you buy the merch. Yup. $20 a piece. So that's fun. That's exciting. So yeah, we appreciate the support. And we will see you guys next week. Bless. Bless.